Hello everyone and welcome to yet another rainy day here in Frostgrave. Now, towards the end of the last episode, we had uh, one of the largest battles that this colony has seen, and it's left quite a lot of mess all over the floor, and quite a lot of a mess of uh, our colonists, frankly. Soundsphere and I Know to Soup are in a bit of a bad way. Uh, Soundsphere, I believe, has received some tending. Uh, let's have a quick look at you and uh, health. Yes, you have had someone come along and uh, tend to your wounds, but I do not believe that I know just soup has. Well, they've had the bruised chest tended to, but they're still they're still bleeding out of their cheek everywhere. That's unfortunate. Hopefully, that whatever you're drinking is quite strong and will help to disinfect the wound. I believe Dakota is one of our top priority doctors, indeed, and you're off to have a drink as well. Ah, nothing like a drunk surgeon. Uh, though the other is Soundsphere, who, yeah, they're going to be out of it for a little while. So I'm not sure when you're going to get seen to I Know to Soup. Hopefully it won't be too terribly long. Now, one of the things that we decided to do in the end of the last episode was to build up a another tower over here. To turn this into a proper gatehouse. Or rather, that was the question that I left with you at the end of the uh, last episode. But... The resounding feedback that I've received is in favor of us building up a proper gatehouse. And to that end, I think we'll even expand this out. However, we have the question of foundations. I don't really want to have wooden foundations all the way down. Instead, I would like to see about getting up to terraforming or to stone block cutting. We could go to stone block cutting. That's only going to require 20 books. But that would also require the production of a mine. Maybe this is something that we could work towards improving in the future, but for now we should probably go for terraforming. Uh, sadly, terraforming requires a shockingly large amount of chronicles. Okay, well, let's uh, get these on the go then. At this point, I think it makes sense for us to have both of the... Uh, of the uh, what is this actually called? Let me uh, just uh, get the writing desk. The basic research table. It says right there, I like. Ah, I'd be dangerous if I could read. There we go. We've got 50 uh, chronicles set to be produced, and that should take us some way towards getting all of that set up. Now, obviously, we also want to bring in all of the bodies from uh, the, uh, the invaders, as well as continue to work over here. Now, we are currently set to dismantle items if they don't meet our exacting standards. Likewise, over here as well, mostly wooden items are going to be broken down, so it's not, not really going to get rid of all of the extremely low-quality iron gear, but that should be fine for the time being. I'll let people have a bit of a snooze. I know soup, have you been... Ah, there we go. I know soup has actually been tended to. That is remarkable. I'm very, very happy with that. Other jobs for us today, other than setting up the gatehouse, I've received an enormous amount of people saying the best thing for us to do with trees is to put some spaces between them. Now, I do understand that in real life you obviously don't want to have a tree overcrowded, their roots will start fighting for nutrients, one will become stunted, and the stuntedness is simulated in this game, and that's for all plants. For most plants, it's based purely on the amount of sunlight they have, so as I've mentioned, you can have plants growing indoors as long as they get sunlight through the window, but depending on how much sunlight they get in the day, the chances of the, that uh, plant becoming stunted and thus having a lower yield increases as the uh, in, in uh, inverse proportion to the amount of sunlight that they get. That's also true of trees, but trees have an additional requirement, and that is space around them. The more trees nearby, the higher the chance goes. Now, I don't have any solid data on how that uh, or whether different species have different sort of, um, they're more sensitive to being overcrowded or not, but it isn't simply a case of if there is a tree next to it, it's going to be stunted. Um, it does seem that, that by uh, uh, some of the comments in the comment section on the last video, that even if you put like three or four spaces on every, uh, all the way around a tree, it could still be stunted if there are just another, uh, a couple of trees nearby. And I, that was only mentioned in regards to apple trees, so perhaps it is species based. But for the time being, these are just our seedling trees. I don't really care about uh, whether or not they produce a lot of wood. They're more there to produce other trees, which they're all doing. They will cast seeds around themselves and they will grow more trees. Even the apple trees have already started doing that so that we can slowly get more and more seeds. 
In the future, I may look to set the trees apart, but it is an awful lot of uh, a lot of uh, micromanaging to try and get that to happen. But having something like this set up over here will give us a real good idea of how aggressive the stunting is just from having trees uh, on either side. So each tree has an immediate two neighbors, generally speaking, around here, except for the ones on the end, which only have one immediate neighbor. And there's a decent amount of room around them. We'll for science this a little bit, but don't worry, I am aware that in an ideal world you would have your trees nicely spaced apart and once we actually get to the point of setting up a proper orchard then we may well do that but uh, for that we would need to know where the proper orchard was going to go and that uh, may be something that we'll look into in this episode. Now other than the, uh, the uh, gatehouse there is one last construction job that we have and that is splitting this up into two distinct bedrooms and then having an entryway over here in to what will effectively be our, uh, well, a uh, very not great hall for, for eating. Is there a bush right, really right in front of the door? Please get rid of that ivy shrub. I will have to put some sort of uh, <laughs> tiling down there to make sure that doesn't happen. As you can see down here, though, we are expanding this out, and hopefully it's keeping things nice and cool. It's a rather chilly 3.8 degrees inside at the moment. I would absolutely love that uh, for my office right now, which is a much, much hotter 30 or so degrees. Uh, Avac isn't built for the warm, unfortunately. But with that all said and done, it looks like it's going to be a little bit of time before all of our peeps are feeling better again, and we've cleaned up all of the mess from outside and we're ready to move on our next project so i'm going to pass a little bit of time and i shall bring you back when there's more to report it is fairly early on the fourth day of autumn and as you can see we are starting to bring in some barley from the farms outside which is just as well because we are actually shockingly shy on food and since the barley's coming in i have high hopes that other foods will be soon to be brought in as well nevertheless i've set out some harvesting tasks for some mushrooms and uh, other odds and sods outside but for now the lion's share of the construction work is done we've got a roof over the little workshop over here we've even got the pies built outside and they have been set up ready to go uh, the both doors have been replaced which is a big help for us and now I think the next thing we're really going to want to add in is a brazier or something along those lines just to make sure that this area is kept warm. It would be nice if we actually had something else to pop in there as well. Dakota Payne's speechcraft skill has increased to one. Very, very nice. I guess yeah, you were just having a nice little chat there. But let's have a look. Can I turn this into a workshop room? Let's have a look. A workshop requires at least two wall tool shelves. No shrines or entertainment structures can exist there though. Needs at least one armor's table, bowyer's table, blacksmith forge, blah 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 blah. It doesn't really matter how many as long as the, the only things in there other than uh, other than the decorations are workshops. Let's go ahead and see if we can't find that then. So we're going to want, here we are, the, well no it won't be the bookshelf will it, it will be this. There we go. We want the workshop table, wall tool shelf. Okay, let's uh, go ahead, pop you down there and there. This should be enough to create this, uh, or rather make this into a workshop. And we also then want, as I mentioned, a little brazier just to keep them warm. Now, do we want a clay brazier? Might as well. We'll keep with the theme so far. There we go. That'll give Tubman something to work on. We are, it looks like, starting to bring... Oh, there we go. We are we're training. Look, a check. Well done. Uh, very, very well done, in fact. Uh, hopefully, we'll be bringing the corpses over to the pyre soon. I do believe they are actually starting to rot out there, which is not the best news, frankly. I can't imagine the smell is going to be very, uh, very comfortable for our poor peeps. Now then, ideally, once... The, how is the cat climbing a ladder? Actually, never mind, it's a cat. We don't ask questions about how cats get to the places they get to. Right, well, our area down here, the uh, the cellar, that still needs a fair bit of time to be expanded out. And if we have a look over here, who is the most likely to mine? Well, no one right now. We don't have anyone who does this job in particular. But I'm thinking we probably should. Unfortunately... The only person who has a passion for it is Dakota, and Dakota is focused on tailoring and doctoring. Um, well, for now, since we don't actually have any smithing to be done, 
I think we're gonna bump up know how to soup. Well, no, uh, I know to soup. Well, we all know what your true name is. You can't fit it in because of characters. But we'll bump you up to uh, level two on mining and we should see this area get expanded out. But I'm gonna have to keep in mind how far down that has moved because we're going to need to reserve some space for the expanded uh, gatehouse over here. Now, given the time, do we really want this to be on? Well, it's still on a low priority, so I guess that's okay. But I think we will possibly bump that priority up. Let's have a look over here. Is this also on a low? Yeah, that is on a low. We'll leave these ones on lows then for the time being. But for the here and now, I think we're going to need to get a little bit more food in here. And that is going to require that we go on the hunt. So let's have a look over the overview and see what wildlife is around and available for us to take down. It's, of course, look only for the 0% retaliation chance. Well, we don't only want the, uh, the young. In fact, I'm fairly certain that that won't really give us the most meat so we'll go for a couple of the deer there we will not go for the boar not yet anyway uh we'll go for a couple of the older deer that should do there we go we'll bring some meat in here now if we can get up to the point of ranching and having our own livestock then that will be ideal but that's uh that's a little ways away from us now how is research going Research isn't too far away. As soon as we've got up to terraforming, I should be able to build out the soil foundation for a new tower, and I'm very eager for that. In the meanwhile, we might want to start considering how I'm going to build out the approach. Now, what I would like is a multi-tiered gatehouse, so they'll enter here on the lowest tier and then have to make their way up to the upper tier before getting through the door, all the while under attack from archers on the actual towers. Now, what I want to do is try and limit how many people can access the door at once, though, because that is going to dramatically increase the amount of time it takes them to break through. So, we might only have a fairly narrow uh, narrow stairway leading up, but that isn't going to look the best. Hmm. Going to have to have a little bit of a consider whether we're going to be putting form before function on this one. But uh, that choice we can safely leave until we actually start building the other tower so we've got a few more days at least a lonely traveler a rangy hawker empties their pack spreading a selection of oddments on a linen cloth on the ground i buy and sell things that take my fancy on the road they say with a crooked smile take a look if you like it is coming up to midday or just past midday actually on the 6th of autumn and a rather disappointing amount of stuff has been done and that is to say not very much stuff at all that being said to be fair our peeps have been running around like their lives depend on it and to a certain degree it they do depend on it, but uh, nothing flashy so far. A lot of odds and sods have been hauled in from all over the place, which is quite nice to see happening. I'm uh, never too much of a fan of just random things being discarded all over the place. And uh, Tubman out here taking down a deer. Well done, Tubman. And you're even taking the carcass back. Ah, oh, well done. I'm very, very proud of you. You've learned so much. But it's time that we got someone over here to have a chat with our trader who is now set up at this lovely little stall over here. Yes, there are still bodies out there, unfortunately. We're not getting through them nearly as fast as I would like. But you may notice that I have started laying out what will eventually be the framework for the ramp leading up our, our gatehouse over here. Now, as for the uh, chatting over here, let's see who is the uh, best talker. It is probably probably Tubman, isn't it? Uh, no, it isn't. It's I Know To Soup with an 18. Well, that's very, very nice to see. Okay, I Know To Soup. Let's get you in here to have a quick chat at with our trader, shall we? Yes, I think we should. Now then, what have you brought with you? Let's have a quick glance through. We've got a bunch of things that we could sell, which wouldn't be a terrible thing, but what do you have to sell us? You've got some stuffed eggs. Oh, okay. I was I was going to make a joke about the things that they had set up on the store, but apparently, no, that's exactly what they had. They they they've even brought chickens. Well, I am somewhat impressed. Very well, I accept your fancy foods, and I will find you some random tat that you can have in exchange. 
Who knew that straw hats would be worth almost nothing right before winter? Nevertheless, I want those four stuffed eggs, so you can go ahead and have that. If nothing else, it's going to give us some more room in uh, the storage area for Dakota to make some more straw hats and to further train up their tailoring. We also sold off a bunch of seeds that we were accruing in rather extent, uh, you know, large numbers, uh, specifically flax seeds. We did not need as many as we had, so uh, we're just trimming the fat a little bit. Uh, in much the same way that the uh, animals out here seem to be trimming the fat off all of these corpses that we're not getting rid of nearly fast enough. I mean, you know, they're helping, so I don't really mind. Oh, wait, great. Well, on the plus side, I didn't sell any of the winter clothes, so there is at least one set of winter clothes ready to replace those that just got used up. Ah, good times. Though I probably do need to uh, adjust the priority of the clothes. Let's not worry about the caps for now, and instead worry about getting... Well, actually, we'll get the caps up there as well. But uh, we'll get the, the clothes done before we worry about making more hats. It is extremely early morning on the seventh day of autumn, and we have both pyres burning at long last. That's a very good sign. Now, we do finally have enough research available for us to grab terraforming, so that's what we're going to be getting now. That's going to give us the soil wall and the soil ramp. Probably not going to be using the ramp for a little while, but uh, the wall, most definitely something that we need. Now, given that, let's go ahead and find soil down here. There we go. And we can start building this out. Now, this does only require dirt, which is fantastic as we are very much going to need all of this built up. Now, I'm hoping they can build it from the top. You know what, though? Th there's no particular guarantee that that is the case. So one thing that we can do to make sure that they can, in fact, build this all is to cancel it from this side, or rather right from there and here. They can build those sides out and then we can build that up depending on how it goes. But it probably will be the case that we just need access from the top and it will be able to build down. But just in case, it's uh, less, less finicky if we take care of that right now. Now with that in mind, actually I'm going to have to build this out in that direction as well, thinking about it. Uh, well, you know what? Sure, we will actually see if they can do the building from uh, a top or not. It looks like I know to soup is doing all the work from down here. That doesn't fill me with confidence that I've made the right move, but we'll see if this works. We'll just plump that in there and see if I know to soup can get over there or not. And uh, at this point, I think we'll go ahead and pop that in there. We're going to throw caution to the wind. going to risk it for the biscuits. There we are, and see if that all works or not. Hopefully, I know soup will be able to construct from the the top. But uh, again, there is no real guarantee of that. But, oh, there we go, fantastic. Okay, all is well. So this wall is almost constructed as is. Uh, we're going to need to expand it out just a little bit as well, right there. Now, in here, I am actually going to want to dig these floors down. I'm going to try and and put together a nice <laughs> look. I decided that we're going to go for aesthetics. It, it's the fashion souls of castle building. Think of it like that. We're going to have a nice three wide staircase going up with different textures to make it look really fancy. But ultimately, they're still only going to be able to attack the door three at a time. And if I uh, decide to build the door out a little bit and have the door right there, only one person is going to be able to attack it at a time. And honestly, that is probably a wise thing to do, thinking about it. So sure, let's go ahead and uh, build this out. We'll have the door right about there. Uh, could I actually move that? No, I probably can't, so we'll just do that there. This way, only one person can fit into that little alcove and be attacking the door, whilst there's three defenders over here attacking them. Uh, while that's all happening, I'm just remove that. Let's uh, sort this place out a little bit. I am getting a little bit frustrated that we don't have many people prioritizing hauling. I have even bumped it up a little bit. But we just don't have that many people around right now. It's not that they're not doing things, they're always working on something. With the exception of, you know, you take a little bit of time to uh, have a break, you know, restore their... Uh, or take care of their mental health, not just their physical health. So uh, I don't mind that one too much, but we definitely do need to get some hauling done. as a bit of a higher priority, so I'm even tempted to pump up priority to a one for a short time. Just to get peeps out there and get all of the things that are outside of the area brought in. 
Uh, it's desperate measures, but let's go ahead and do it. There we go. A friendly visit. Another merchant caravan is on their way. A dealer in luxury sometimes carries swords from Toledo and Damascus. Milanese armor, unusual mechanical parts, esoteric ingredients, and books bound in buttery parchment. They're exclusive and carefully selected items come at a premium. Well, we're dirt poor, so I don't know why they've shown up here at Frostgrave, but uh, come along in then, I guess. Is, you're always welcome. Uh, we are making some progress on getting everything built up now that uh, the uh, hauling has been done though it's still being done I guess it's a it's a job that'll never really truly be finished but it does seem that it has resulted in some additional efficiency around the settlement which I'm extremely happy to see we want to build that out there there we go oh it won't build it there that's an interesting oh is perhaps there aha there is a an empty tile there Interesting that that now can't exist here, but uh, one would wonder why that one couldn't. Uh, since we can have a corner over here, I, I'm not quite sure why we can't have a corner tile there. That's a bit of a weird one, but all I can assume is there's some sort of artifact because there is uh, less foundation underneath. Nevertheless, we are here. Now everyone is uh, has uh, gone to sleep, but I know too, I'm afraid you're going to have to get up and see what the traders have to trade and if they want to buy anything off us. There we go. We're going to acquire a couple of headpieces, a headband, a hood, and a hair headpiece, as well as some coins in exchange for some booze and some more of our straw hats. It seems that uh, Frostgrave is uh, starting to turn a bit of a profit off our straw hats. Perhaps uh, these uh, they're starting to become a bit of a brand. People in the cities are walking around with the height of straw hat fashion, all thanks to to Dakota, because it's pretty much only Dakota making them. Nevertheless, that wasn't too bad of a trade, and I hope that the uh, peeps will like putting on the new headwear, which they should do as soon as they're not dog-tired and wake up and go and grab it. Now, with that being said, though, as soon as these walls are done, we're going to be, well, rather, we're going to pull these walls down right now. We're going to replace the walls, the wooden walls down here with dirt, and then we're going to start building a pretty much a mirror of this tower, and that is going to uh, be the uh, sister tower to enable us to attack any scallywags trying to enter through the gatehouse here, though. I've still not decided how we're going to decorate this area properly, but I have got some plans. And welcome back. It is early morning on the 11th of autumn. We are very, very rapidly approaching winter time. And we are watching I Know to Soup and, of course, Al Cramps bring in a decent haul of wood, which is allowing Tubman to get a, the beginning walls done on the new tower. Now, as soon as that wall is done, then this area will effectively be, uh, be isolated from this internal area. I can tear down these walls and actually start work on expanding this out the way I want it to, to look for the approach. Now, we can either have our enemies approach on the outside walls or they can approach up through the middle. Now, the middle obviously has uh, a bit more of a uh, grand feeling to it, but it also offers our archers the uh, easiest way for archers on either tower to attack the enemy. If they're moving up underneath, or rather right beside each tower, then they're effectively going to be underneath the archers on that respective tower, so they'll have much less of an opportunity to shoot them, especially if they're just lined up there, which would be great for the opposing archer, but I would rather be able to have both of our archers raining arrows down. So, with that in mind, we are now going to delete all of this. There we go. We're going to get all of this area deconstructed. Uh, or I was going to completely delete. Uh, never mind. Friendly visit. Another lone traveler. I, you know what? Far be it from me to say that uh, I'm unhappy with the amount of visitors that are coming by, but I am shocked. Nay, I am suspicious at the lack of enemy activity. We've got another merchant. I don't have things to sell to a merchant. My lord, I, I'm starting to wonder if maybe these merchants aren't quite merchants, but are in fact spies. Pepin has successfully trained, well, a, a, a cat, or look a chicken, to be a pet. Happiest of days. Let's see, has that changed anything in the overview for you? 
Uh, yes, you are now capable of vermin control. Well, very well. Let's uh, get you on that. Now, who deserves the pet? Who is feeling the most gloomy? I'm going to assume that the uh, a pet cat would lift anyone's spirit, so we're going to find the person who needs their spirits lifted the most, and that's going to be Dakota. Dakota, let me just double check that you don't hate cats. It doesn't look like you do, so there we go. Your, your cat is now going to be Lucka Chicken. There you go. They, or rather, Dakota is now Look a Chicken's human. Uh, I forgot for a moment uh, that cats don't, aren't owned by humans, rather, the cat adopts a human. Well, I have assigned the human to be adopted. Hopefully, Look a Chicken agrees. It appears that the first of our trees are being chopped down. This is wonderful. The, that, these trees have all been stunted, though, yes, you're quite correct. These ones, not so. It looks like they will only mention whether they're stunted or not when they are ready to be chopped. Let's have a look. Are any of the others mentioning it? No, they are not. Okay, well, given that, then it uh, does seem that we might want to spread them out a little bit. But uh, I was hoping that they would just tell us that they were struggling as as they went but uh, no once they hit the growth stage of mature uh, they mentioned that they were indeed stunted up until that point though hmm. i mean this one's immature and it isn't stunted that's interesting the scots pine doesn't seem to be affected in the same way that is very interesting how how mature were these trees 1.8 percent hmm. that's and this one is uh, mature as well. Okay, so, no, going back then, coming back right around to the, uh, for sciencing, it does seem that there is a little bit of leeway. The birch trees seem to struggle a lot with having neighbors, but the pine, at the very least, in fact, all of these trees have grown nice and tall compared to them. Let's, uh, let's see if any of these are mentioning that they are stunted. Yes, those are stunted, those are stunted. Yes, all of the trees around here are stunted. That is a very, very interesting scenario. Okay, well, either way, we now have a bit more information to play around with, so I'll start to spread out some of our orchards and uh, our managed tree farms to see if we can't find a sweet spot and whether there is any kind of species uh, impact because notice there is no pine growing over here. The pine was only growing there. That being said, these trees all seemed to be okay for the most part. Very, very curious indeed. It is getting into the evening now on the 12th day of autumn, and as you can see, we have been making some staggering progress on the tower. Much less so on the approach, but still, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. Wow, Soundsphere has converted to devote Oak Brethren. Practicing Oak Brethren no longer felt meaningful. Uh, so, uh, you, you upgraded, I, I guess. Uh, what was that because? Let's have a quick look. Is there any kind of social there? Was there any log of why that happened? Uh, stepped into an Oak Brethren shrine. We have a look at this. You had most recent interactions. Oh, brother and faith decrease slightly. Uh, talking to Dakota, uh, or rather. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, talking to Dakota. Then, Oak Brother and Faith increase slightly because of Tubman, uh, decrease slightly because of Beatrum, increase slightly because of Tubman, and again, increase slightly because of Tubman. So, Tubman pushed you over. Tubman successfully converted you to being a devout Oak Brethren. Okay, well, uh, well done, Tubman, I guess. Uh, I'm sure that is actually uh, a good thing for you. Whether it is going to be a good thing for Soundsphere, we will, we have yet to see. Nevertheless, I'm glad that there is some motion in that regard. Our settlers have been exhausted a lot lately. I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, I'm not giving them enough time to sleep. Uh, it pains me, but here you go. You can have an extra hour of sleep. It's a terrible thing to be tired all the time, and I, I wouldn't wish that on you, so you can you can have a proper proper kip. Uh, we can see that uh, the predators have been rather successful out here, based only on the carcasses that are strewn about the place, or rather the bones. Uh, any other uh, animals around here ready for us to collect? No, there's loads of carcasses, though. Okay, well, carcasses of what exactly? Does it tell us any anything about them? No. Apparently, no one in the colony is uh, sufficiently 
accustomed with hunting to be able to look at a carcass and tell me what animal left it behind. But oh well. It is hitting winter now though, the first day of winter and with it come the snows. I should imagine that all of our farms are probably going to, uh, going to perish in this. So I may just give you a quick harvest order get out there grab what you can if it is remotely ripe enough to uh, to get they're going to seed and that, that's fine just get out there bring in what you can and what's already been planted it's probably not going to make it through the winter i should imagine uh we will hope of course we do have some uh apples over here though now i wonder if uh, stunting the tree would affect the apple production because it's certainly not mentioning that it's stunted uh, let's just double check all of them actually uh, no, it doesn't look like there's any problem there, so that's uh, at least something. Now, I should imagine that everyone's going to need to start uh, getting the braziers lit at this point. It's going to get increasingly cold. Winter held Frostgrave in its icy grip, which was rather fitting, given the name. So the settlers gathered round the fire on long, dark evenings. They needed to bundle up in warm clothing and heat their chambers to beat the chill. Well, I'm sure we'll manage it. Let's see. How cold is it outside and how warm is it inside? It's only, only two degrees inside. Oh, maybe, maybe I should let you have a little bit more heat on the fire then, shouldn't I? Uh, okay, let's increase all of the brazier's intensity up to high, given that it is now winter time. Time. That should do well enough, and work continues on the tower, and it's actually doing very, very well. And at last, the tower is complete. Now, this tower is an exact copy of the other one, it's just mirrored. Uh, down here, I'm not yet sure how I'm going to place, uh, whether we're going to have Merlons along here or not. I strongly suspect we will. But we are going to need this area to be dug out before I can put in a proper approach, or rather the uh, steps up. And then once that's done, we'll be able to play around with the uh, the doors down on this side. Another merchant caravan, so no attack this season, it seems. We've still got a couple of trees out here that haven't decided that it's time for them to be cut down yet or at least no one has decided to come over there and cut them down which is fine i suppose now if we have the opportunity i would actually like our hunters to take out wolves but that's a little bit more of a risky proposition a single hunter going out and taking on a wolf that's a worrying uh worrying suggestion they could easily be overwhelmed but taking out a group of archers to cull the wolf population manually, now that is absolutely something that we, we may turn our attentions to. But really I want to get this whole approach done before I do anything else because every day spent not doing this is another day that an enemy might decide to show up and attack us. Now, Dwight over here, let's uh, have a quick look at you. You are... Uh, it doesn't actually say, I'm sure it did mention what, uh, where they came from, uh, but we'll see what you have to sell. You've got a fairly hearty little band there accompanying you. I'm kind of impressed. I know soup. Let's go ahead and barter. Let's find out what they have to offer. Okay, we're going to be picking up two more, uh, pieces of headgear. The Heretic Crown is superior iron piece of headgear there and a flawless bearskin uh, chaperon so uh, with a couple of coins as well as so we're trading them two reasonably good caps a bunch of saplings and some rough wine and a fairly uh, fairly large stock of tallow as well there we go and they still have a little bit of a profit so hopefully that will there we go one along with the church of the third coming not too bad at all all things said and done now hopefully those will be brought in and someone will decide to pop them on at some point in the fairly near future that being said let's have a look you've got the uh, sturdy auto equipped hat there sturdy auto equipped I want mostly for you to auto equip things as you can uh, winter clothes there we go yeah, you, you, they are threadbare and falling off you, but that's all right. I would rather you have threadbare winter clothes and no winter clothes. Uh, on that note, though, let's go and check out how things are doing over here. Not enough resources to make any more winter clothes. That doesn't surprise me too terribly much, if I'm perfectly honest. And I shouldn't imagine that we're going to be getting much more, unless we get out there and do a lot more hunting. Maybe some uh, wolf pelt winter clothes are in our near future. Though I notice, I know to soup 
is getting the digging done. That is fantastic news. Tubman, by the looks of it, it might actually be... Uh, so, Beatrum and Tubman are both heading out to hunt. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Well, uh, I haven't marked any wolves to be hunted yet, so they're definitely going for deer. But uh, there is a good chance that we will see some wolf carcasses in, fro in frost graves very, very near future. But while the last bits of work are being done by I know to suit there on digging up that area, one thing that a couple of people have suggested is I should stuck down some stick traps, and I think you have a fair point. Now, I don't want to carpet the area in stick traps. Honestly, I feel that it's way too cheesy, but we are going to put a decent amount just outside. Let's do something along these lines there we go we'll have a have a little field right outside the door but there will always be a valid path to move through i would imagine that there is a small chance that our peeps will set off their own traps much like other games in this genre so let's not make a completely uh, impossible path to navigate now obviously if this was dwarf fortress i would have some sort of elaborate drawbridge mechanism that uh, gave the citizens a completely safe route to exit our our fortifications when there isn't an enemy present uh, afoot in the countryside but when there was that would be sealed once all of the citizens were inside and the only approach then would be across a very narrow bridge absolutely pregnant with weapon traps however this isn't dwarf fortress so they're just going to have to do deal with uh, sticks on the ground little little tiny pits beware your ankles invaders it is midday on winter, uh, on the third day of winter, and unfortunately, I know Soup just failed to construct a clay stairs. But never mind, Tubman has finished the wooden stairs, and I know Soup is also very stubborn, so the other stairs will be finished in just a moment. There we go, fantastic. Let's get that all done, and then we have our approach. There we are. It's not the best. Once we've got stone cutting, then I'll replace the wooden stairs with stone and maybe even do away with the uh, the clay. Maybe we have stone there, maybe cu uh, better cut stone over here. But as you can already tell, we're going to be getting rid of this. There will be room for three people to stand here, one person to stand right there. And those are the only people who are going to be able to get into attack the door now that means we need to change position of this door this one actually needs to shimmy across and be centralized thankfully the uh, placement of the spikes is not going to impede that our colonists are smart enough to navigate around the spikes i should imagine that our enemies will also be at least that clever unfortunately but uh, that's just the way that that one's going to go but there we are our gatehouse is for all intents and purposes complete we've got a little bit of shaping to do yet but that is all we need to do there now that leaves us with another task now Obviously, we are struggling with the bedroom situation, something I would very, very much like to change. So, with that in mind, we're going to remove these two sections, this window and this wall. I'm going to replace this window with a wall and this wall with a door. Soon after that, or in fact, straight away, I should say, we're going to remove this door as well. That one is going to be replaced with a solid wall. Now, you might be wondering why I'm doing that, and it isn't to simply make yet another awful private room. Instead of having three small, pokey, awful rooms that no one appreciates and one moderate, moderately comfortable barrack, we're instead going to be going back to having a single barrack, but a much better appointed barrack. This entire structure here, we're going to, have, we're going to remove the internals completely and have six beds against, e or rather three beds against each wall and the, the decent amount of braziers in here. And this entire structure over here is going to be repurposed into a dining room. We're going to allow for six people to sit around the fire. We're going to have some nice braziers and some games of backgammon as well. I know it feels like we're taking a step back. I was very pr proud to have them have private rooms, but it's very clear that until I can afford to give them individual bedrooms of a moderate size, this is the best thing that I can do for them. So uh, hopefully they won't mind too terribly much. Now I am going to have to replace the now busted up roof which i hadn't really considered but there we are all right let's uh, get that on the go and i do believe if we uh zoom all the way out 
and bring that roof up it was a plain old wicker roof that won't be too difficult for us to pop up we've got plenty of wicker too much if you ask me uh, there we go and they will of course need to be these uh, in that format there we are that shouldn't be too difficult for us to do at all i love the the little detail of the uh, icicles there that's actually pretty wonderful now if we can get that all going nice and quickly i should be able to pull these internal walls down and open up this entire room for our peeps to have a pleasant night's sleep now are we going to be able to get onto the dining room as well uh, it's getting on in winter but you know what sure let's let's make sure that uh, we've actually made some decent progress i think having a nice big gatehouse is all well and good but we definitely want to get to the point that they are actually properly housed bed and uh with bed and breakfast in proper rooms uh dakota are you sure these are going to be able to grow uh, yeah, it might be three degrees right now, but I saw it get down to minus ten last night. Are you absolutely certain this cabbage is going to be all right in this temperature? Because I am 100% not. Hmm, I have questions. Also, currently, the bedrooms are a bit of an assault course. Let's try and fix that for them, at the very least. There we go. That should uh, take uh, put everything back where it needs to be. Oh, hmm, maybe that one. Not quite as much, though. Let's uh, see if that... No, it won't. Ooh. Okay, so a w having a wall above was supporting that previously. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that can't go there, is it? Hmm. Very curious indeed. I'm not quite sure at all how that one isn't able to be supported by these walls. Uh, it might be the case that currently that doesn't have enough support from the walls that exist. Yeah, that's probably the case. So once those are built in, we'll be able to fill that in. That will be uh, what we hope at the very least. There we go. We'll get these all correctly set up. There we are. And I think... Well, just because it looks nice over there to have that wall in this position, I'll leave it as is. But now that that's been built, let's see if we can't get that floor in place. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Right, we're going to want another bed. Let's get you in. Well, we'll pop it over here for now. Oh, new settler. Salvation, the faithful sons of England. Molly said they had walked for many days, hiding in trees, ditches, and abandoned barns. Followers of the soy distant king tracked her relentlessly, sometimes with baying hounds. I've done no harm, said Molly, asking for Frostgrave's protection. Would you risk it? Edmund's forces may be close behind. Hmm. Settler slammed the door shut. No, we will never do that. Frostgrave in Frostgrave's inhabitants decided to help him. Well, let's find out about you then, Molly. Let's have a look. Uh, you are a tempered carpenter. You're benevolent and you're robust. These are fantastic Fantastic traits. I approve enormously. But what I don't approve of is you going by an alias. Let us find out what Creotrocles believes your true name to be. Everyone say hello to Melody Rose. Oh, well, Melody Ross right now. Let me delete the, uh, the space there. Melody Rose. It's 2023, developers. Really? We're having that kind of restrictive character limit on names? My goodness but welcome let's have a look at you let's have a look at your wounds minor chest laceration and minor arm lacerations neither of those particularly great okay well let's uh, get you set up we can definitely afford to have you on this sleeping schedule now we've got uh, everyone uh, more position now than they were before i kind of like it there we are we've got the patterns nice and uh, uniform all the way down. Now, of course, you're probably not well equipped. Uh, no, you're not well equipped at all. I will get you to draw. Oh, actually, you've got some nice winter clothes. That's at least something. I will have you drop that down, though. But let's have a look at your skills. You're not very much of a marksman. You're not very much of a, with melee, either. You're quite good with mining, though. That's always nice to see. But uh, we are definitely... Well, I mean, of the skills you have, I guess marksman is the one to give you very well i'll uh, allow you to have all items all headgear that's fine our melee attackers should really be going for helmets over all headgear though uh, there we are and you will be going ranged so ranged only 
please and indeed thank you. As for armor, um, light armor for you. All armor for our melee guardsmen. Now, this is only going to give us three archers, and only one of them is not very good. Uh, so we might want to have a look at elevating uh, one of the melee guardsmen to the position of marksman. That's definitely not going to be Dakota. Dakota has absolutely zero interest in it. However, uh, let's see. I'm going to say... Soundsphere, you're switching over to ranged for the upcoming battle, which means you go back to, uh, well, I guess all headgear doesn't really matter too much, and light armor. There we go. That should be plenty good enough for now. Right. Let's see. Who is bedding down in here? I don't actually know who is going uh, down there. Oh, I, I know to soup was sleeping there. Okay, I know to soup. This is now your bed. Enjoy. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and build another. And also, let's actually tear these down. We no longer want these in here. I would love it if we're able to get the dining hall properly enclosed, but there is a very small chance of that, I fear. Still, we'll give it our best shot all the same. Beatrum, why are you fighting a boar? Oh my lord, you think I, I drilled it into you enough? Don't mess with the pigs with spikes in their faces. Oh my lord, right, you need to get back as quickly as you possibly can, and maybe if someone else is there who's got a bow, they'll be okay. No, but perhaps we will sup on pig flesh tonight. Uh, who's nearby? Let's find out. Where's Tubman? Tubman, uh, you're actually not that far away. You are hunting something appropriate. You're hunting a deer. Ah, uh, my lord. Right, okay, let's get you over here. Um... This is not the right time, though. I'm going to be honest with you all. I had not been intending to have to deal with angry pigs right now. But here we are. All right, let's get you back up there. Uh, I was worried I was going to be dealing with wolves, but no. Wolves are the least of my worries, apparently. All right, let's get you down here. You can deal with the angry pig. There. And Tubman can also deal with the angry pig. Beatrum, now that you've caused this mess... Oh. Oh, Sansfia actually has a bow. Oh, I thought you had, because of the helm. Oh, that wasn't the smartest move, was it? No. Now Sansfia is going to be messed up as well. Uh, is this boar? Oh, the boar's almost down. Come on. One of you. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, okay, go get men mended right before the big old fight that's going to happen in 18 hours. I swear. My lord. On the plus side, we're actually making some progress with the bedrooms and indeed the dining room. So, you know, it's not all bad news. Just mostly. Okay, with only 10 hours left until the search party arrives, Tubman is putting the finishing touches to the dining room. Look at that, we've got an entirely enclosed dining room. No more eating in the snow, which honestly, to me, sounds like a, a punishment. But I'm sure the people of Frostgrave have had enough of snow. Uh, it's kind of it's in the name, really. Uh, Sansfia has converted to practicing Oak Brethren. Um, Devout Oak Brethren no longer felt meaningful enough. Really? Are you just going to keep flip-flopping like this? Oh, Melody Rose just collapsed whilst praying. That is almost endearing, really, when you think about it. But uh, Right, let's make sure that you've all got beds. Yes, indeed you do. This is marvellous. What's the temperature outside? Minus nine. Inside, it's uh, minus one. That's uh, not as good as I'd hoped it would be. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of hopeful that it would be a lot higher than that. Uh, I guess we could add in an extra brazier right in the middle. To try This is a very large room at the end of the day, so it kind of makes sense that it's going to be struggling to maintain its heat, given that. Uh, how's everything looking down here? Everything is looking quite nice. I wouldn't mind having some braziers out here. Um, just kind of light the area, but uh, we're a little ways away from that. I don't think that's going to be something that we're going to be doing for quite some time. Now then, other than that, I think, well, we could possibly add in some Merlons uh, along here and then have maybe some sort of little roof over this area, but I don't want to cover up this spot, otherwise our archers will have a devil of a time shooting anyone who's attacking the door, and that's ultimately the whole point in building it like that. Soundsphere is a little bit wounded, but uh, is actually doing all right right now. Tubman, wow, what a trooper staying up all night t t on your 
day before your birthday as well. It's midnight on Tubman's birthday, and they are making sure that everyone else gets to sleep in some comfort this evening. And they're now going to finally have some food. Then, are you going to go to sleep? I feel that you're going to need a rest, because in two hours, you're going to have two and a half hours before a fight. Ah, you know what? It's fine. I'm sure Tubman has it in them to uh, make this fight uh, fight count. Uh, there we all rather make the, the two hours that they've got before the fight count. But there it is. Roasty toasty. Eight degrees in there. It's actually three degrees in the uh, room opposite, which is kind of impressive, really, considering it had one less brazier, but still managed to keep a decent temperature. Minus two in there. And uh, minus two in there as well, actually. All right. Violent extortionists, the faithful sons of England. The standard bearer made a show of reading out the proclamation. Melody Rose is disloyal to the crown. She must be rendered unto us for trial and punishment at King Edmund's pleasure. His companions stood regimented, formidable, their armor glinting. Their fa the faithful had no intention of leaving empty-handed. We're not going to surrender one of our own. Frostgrave's defiant settlers refused to bow to the assailant's demands. Minus 120 alignment towards the faithful sons of England. You stood your ground, refusing to give in to their demands. The attackers leave, but your relationship with the... F they dare tail and run. They've heard of the stories of Harlech. They knew that they couldn't defeat us here. Ah, those cowards left before the fight. Nevertheless, this is possibly the best outcome because uh, they more than likely had a lot of armor. And whilst I wouldn't have minded taking that armor from them, I have a sneaking suspicion that it may have cost us a bit. But sadly, that means we don't get to see our defenses being used. Oh, I thought that was going to be a brilliant end to this episode, but we have been robbed. We have ro been robbed in the same way they tried to rob us of Melody Rose, only they succeeded in robbing us of a battle. Uh, well, I guess Melody Rose paying for your safety with a lack of a battle to wrap up the episode and test out our new gatehouse is just a price that we're going to have to accept. But we have run all out of time for today's episode. But as ever, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more, you know how to let me know down with those lovely buttons below. But that is going to be it from me and from the colonists, the settlers of Frostgrave for today. I will catch you in the next one. But until then, and as always, do take care. And don't give in to those sons of England. <laughs>